What's going on everybody? Chase on two wheels here in front of Mountain Motorsports in Roswell, Georgia. In front of me, I've got the 2024 Honda CRF 300 Rally, which from what I understand is a barely street legal dirt bike. Today, I'm going to be doing a first ride on this bike and at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you guys if it's a purchase or pass based on our road course that we take all the bikes on. And guys, without any further ado, it's a first ride. Let's see what it looks like and let's see what it sounds like. It's hot as balls. It's hot as balls. Oh, yeah. That's my cue to go away. Make sure to get Cardos with a discount code and link in the description because Cardos are amazing. I'm going to go drink some water before I get intoxicatingly hot. Where am I going? This way. guys uh as i get my phone on the quad lock here i just do want to note uh my voice has been kind of weird lately uh i'm not sick or anything but my voice just keeps coming in and out so uh if my voice is sounding weird or cracks or whatever just know that i'm dealing with something i don't know what it is it ain't gonna stop me from riding this thing though Alrighty, guys let's get on the CRF rally. Holy shit, this thing is tall. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm 5'10", got a 32 inch inseam, and if I try real hard, I can actually flat foot this motorcycle and my knees are almost straight. You are looking at a bit higher of a seat height on this thing. If I remember correctly, seat height is 34 inches, so it is not, not a short motorcycle. Let's get the bike turned on. You guys already heard the sound check. You know what it sounds like. All right, guys, we got a simple bike. There's no uh, no modes or anything like that. So I, th I think we'll get this video started. Whoa, that clutch wants to be pulled all the way in. All right. If only I had Honda's new e-clutch. If you're watching this video, I just got back from the uh, e-clutch event and it was awesome. All right, guys, before we hit the road, just do want to remind you guys that we've given up on the uh, YouTube uh, notification bell and we now email you guys once a week a little update of all the stuff that went down. Oh, shit, I'm going to go. Join the email newsletter. Okay, bye. Links in the description. Woo. All righty. We are out here on the CRF 300. I am really curious how this bike is going to feel compared to my old WR250. Now, that bike is more of a uh, street focused supermoto, but you know, the low CC dual sport thing is, it's an area that I've spent a lot of time riding in. So I'm interested to see how this thing feels. All right, guys, it's a first ride. So let's talk about body position real quick. You know, for such a small, thin motorcycle, I am pretty surprised that the seat, it's a little hard, but it is actually kind of comfortable. I thought this would be a lot thinner and way more painful. And we've already done the camera car run and I've got really no problem with the seat. So actually impressed with that. When it comes to my body position, my legs are kind of flat here and they go back just a little. I sit up pretty tall and then my arms are kind of relaxed uh, in a medium high position. I think it's an honestly a pretty comfortable position. And if I stand up, 
if I bend and I bend my arms, I can still get a good grasp on the handlebars. So if I was going to be doing a lot of off-road, I, I may put risers on this bike, but generally for, you know, my 510 frame, it, it actually works out pretty well. And uh, the body is just pretty comfortable. So I got, uh, I got no issues. I am so glad this bike is so light because it is a tall mofo, man. Luckily, it's really light. So guys, typically this red light, I uh, show you guys the modes, but we have no modes here. So uh, since we don't have that, let's talk about the uh, power on the bike and what's powering it. Inside of this bike, we have Honda's 283cc single. So it is a single style engine. That thing's good for um, about mid 20s horsepower and right at 20 foot pounds of torque. Now we were looking up the information on this bike and I feel like I couldn't find a consistent horsepower and torque number different websites had different numbers so you know just to be safe we're going to call it mid 20s on horsepower and uh right at 20 on torque and all of that for a weight of 330 pounds wet i believe 330 332 something like that very light motorcycle which i can confirm does feel as light as that sounds so guys, let's talk about uh, city riding on this bike. So with a 300cc that's that light, as you would imagine, getting in and around traffic, this thing is going to be like a little wasp. It will just flick left and right. I mean, look at this, I'm barely moving the handlebars and the whole bike just moves back and forth. So you are talking about an extraordinarily nimble bike. And when we're in the city area, you know, we don't have a ton of horsepower or a ton of torque, but this amount of power is absolutely ample. It's literally capable of doing anything inside the city limits. You're never gonna be wanting for power. And uh, I got no problems with it here. I am not looking forward to the highway. If my old WR250 was anything of the sort, if it's anything similar to that, the highway is gonna be atrocious, but we'll see. I will find myself in city riding and you guys might see later in the video, but I'll glance down and I'll literally be in like fifth or sixth gear just cruising with traffic. So, and that's not even on the highway, that's in, in the city. So it's funny to be on a lower CC bike sometimes. Now, something I want to touch back on is the maneuverability because it is a massive deal on this bike and it is honestly almost shocking how maneuverable it is. So this is one of those motorcycles that it takes so little energy to get this thing moving. I could literally blink my right eye and the bike would be like, skirt. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's really neat and I'm sure that's awesome off-road because you can just really maneuver it how you need to. But if you're new to riding motorcycles and you have a bike that's that easy to maneuver, it can feel a little sketchy at times. I don't know if it's a mixture of the size tires and the weight of the bike, but it is just very easy to change lanes and, and get it moving. So, you know, pros and cons with everything, of course, but just, you know, keep that in mind. If you were maybe like a newer rider looking into getting this, I, I would just be like, be careful, you know, play around at a parking lot, play around at speed and get used to the, to how quick it will flick into a different direction. Not only is the bike really quick to maneuver and very flicky, but the steering on this bike is also incredibly light. So the handlebars just don't take any energy to move side to side. All of that is just kind of adding up to a, a very kind of little chaotic package for, uh, for road riding. You guys know everything with a motorcycle is personal preference. I'm sure some people really dig that kind of really flicky, super lightweight steering. I typically am a guy who likes kind of stability and that comes with weight. So I find myself wishing I had a little more stability in the in the steering on the on the CRF rally. Just makes me feel more planted on the road, especially dipping into a turn. God, that's that scares the shit out of me every time I do it. It almost feels like I'm just going to wash out. That Infinity looks fantastic. Compared to my WR250, I do appreciate the added power this bike has. But the more time I'm spending on it riding around, I am realizing more and more that this most definitely is a bike made for off-road riding that has got all the check marks necessary to make it a road bike. Normally in the past, what that means is for a first ride bike, it's not gonna be as a glowing, amazing motorcycle because guys, I was doing research on this bike. I had never really looked into it much before today. And I did not realize that there are tons of people out there that 
love this motorcycle so it leads me to the assumption that it has to be amazing at something and so far it's not necessarily bad in the city like as far as a super lightweight little nimble bike it works but i don't know it's just not hitting like a lot of people's videos that i've seen talk about it and that's probably because it's all on asphalt today before we get on the highway and i inevitably uh the complain about something about this little twitchy thing i will say if you are looking into this motorcycle this is a very general road overview if you want to see what the bike is capable of another buddy of mine that makes youtube content dork in the road i'll have a link for a playlist he has he bought one of these and just kitted it out so you guys go check him out if you're really looking into purchasing this thing and we are getting on the highway holy shit all right guys uh we're getting on the highway that means we have to do a job we got to figure out how fast this bike will get from 40 to 80 thanks to our buddies over at law tigers they are the motorcycle lawyer that you need to call if anything happens to you on the road so uh, i'm going to back off from traffic a little bit i'm not really sure what gear i need to be in but we'll get this thing going all right on your mark get set go 40 to 80 Oh, that was not a good gear. This is not going to be a good showing, boys. I'm trying. I'm still trying. I'm just going to have to stay in this lane. We're still trying. Hold on. I'm, I'm tucking in. We're going to. We're not going to make it there? For real? We're in six? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't do it. I'm break I got to stop. I can't make it. Okay. First 40 to 80. Not capable all right guys we're on the highway with the crf 300 rally and what i'm feeling right now is the handlebars just kind of wiggling a little bit i'm currently going 70 miles an hour and this is not the most comfortable i have ever been on the highway um suspension wise it feels fine it's really comfortable but with this single trying so hard the bike is pretty vibrating right now and i can feel that in my hands i can feel that in my feet I am definitely pushing the bike farther than I should right now. It's not doing the most amazing job with kind of tracking well. Like the handlebars are just so light. They kind of just whiffed around with the wind. So when I get a side gust, I get some wiggle in the handlebars, which is not crazy comfortable. I don't know if I would recommend this for long stints on the highway. I, I might push you towards something else. I definitely don't feel comfortable going over 75 if I could even go over 75. Yeah, this tire and, and setup combo is just not the one for highway. Obviously, there's no rider stuff like cruise control or anything like that, so we don't have anything to talk about. There is a cop behind me now, so that terrifies me that uh, so <laughs> that would be hilarious if I got pulled over by a cop where I couldn't go 80. How the irony would be so huge with that. Anyways, guys, I'm going to finish up the highway if I don't get pulled over by the undercover police officer. And uh, while I do that, I'm going to listen to some music on my Cardo. If you guys want to grab a Cardo, I've got a discount code in the description. They are the best Bluetooth communicator on the market. I absolutely love them. I do not feel comfortable on this highway on this bike it is just it's too windy all right guys that's it for the highway thank goodness i am glad to be off the highway really let down that i didn't get to find out the 40 to 80 pull i'm gonna be honest guys that i'm pretty upset about that and i mean ain't shit i can do about it but yeah i just don't feel stable right now i do not feel like i can push this i mean it's fine just the thin tires the thin bike the lightweight i i'm wanting for stability that's a keep moving please keep moving okay cool i am surprised at the power that this engine uh comes out of i'm really happy with that i kind of expected it to lug down a lot more than this but like i said i rode a 250 around for a while and that thing was just dying for power so i'm kind of happy with uh with the crf power wise it's not punchy or it doesn't hit hard any specific spot but for city stuff it's very capable 
one of the things I'm not a huge fan of is the front suspension specifically. Watch how much this thing dives. I don't have ABS, so I'm trying to be careful. Do you guys see that? It dives so much. It's very soft. And off-road, that might be great. So you guys that have a lot more off-road experience, you know, please let me know in the comments. Is a really soft front suspension that helpful off-road? Because on-road, I need it to be way harder than that just to not dive so much. And the suspension is not adjustable, so I can't really do anything about it. That being said, the bike is only like 6,200 bucks. So it's a really cost-effective bike. It's also a Honda. And from what I understand, and it has massive service intervals so you know like there's definite pros to this thing i want to have a a little more stiff suspension up front when it comes to braking i haven't really had a problem with the braking i felt more hindered by the dive in the front forks then i have the braking capability I feel like they're adequate. The levers feel fine when I'm, I'm pulling them in, but the bike also doesn't have ABS. That kind of sketches me out to not have ABS and that much brake dive. It's just a weird combo that gets me kind of like, uh, I don't know about this. I will note that the rally model also has a larger fuel tank, like a larger fuel capacity. So you're definitely going to get more mileage out of this, especially with it being a lower CC. It's going to be sipping on fuel. So that is a definite pro if you're going like on a long off-road adventure. Definitely a big thing to be looking into. As far as the transmission goes, I feel like I'm shifting a lot on this motorcycle and that's pretty common for low CC bikes. but. I feel like I get up to six gear really quickly. So uh, just know that if you do pick one of these up and you're going to be using it for street riding, you are going to be spending a lot of time shifting. I will say the transmission feels good. I love the feel of getting the shifter up. And then when I'm in first and I try to go down, it has a floor and the shifter won't go anymore. And that kind of lets me know as the rider I'm in first. So I do appreciate that. But overall, you know, it's just the, uh, it's that suspension that's really poking out to me so far as far as the performance stuff all right guys so let's talk about the controls up here not a ton to talk about but very typical honda they've got a few buttons and they're all freaking massive that's really it we've got the small screen here the little lcd screen uh with some buttons on the side to change the information that we're seeing on the screen i guess haven't really played around with that not going to i'm never a big fan of uh the buttons on the screen but it is what it is it's cool that they're I do like that it has a little GPS bar and it's what we mounted the quad lock onto. So we just use the quad lock bar mount and it's on this GPS bar. So that's, that's pretty cool. I will say the hand guards are pretty neat. They add to the look of the whole rally vibe. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of currently, I'm not a big fan of how much I have to pull in the clutch for it to fully engage. I literally have to use all my fingers and pull the clutch to the handlebar. So if I were to buy this motorcycle, I would definitely need to adjust it. Luckily, as you can see right here, it's able to be adjusted. So I'm just kind of suffering with it right now. But if I bought it, you know, you, you can change that. The clutch does not have a lot of weight behind it. So it's a really light clutch and the brakes the same way. Uh, everything's pretty light. Again, that's relatively typical on a lower CC bike. I'm not a huge fan of that feel. I like to have a little more weight behind things. So it's not really my vibe, but you know, it's not bad. I, 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 would, I don't think I would complain about it. And a lot of people actually really like lighter uh, levers. So there's that. I'm not gonna say much about the screen. You know, this is one of those bikes that's made to adventure. It's made to be off-road. And I think it is beneficial to have less tech on a bike like that because dude, when you're out in the middle of bum, you know what? You don't want to be having all this tech on a bike because it's just asking for one thing to go wrong and then poof, you're stuck. You know what I mean? That's the whole mentality behind uh, Yamaha's Tenere 700. They've intentionally left tech out of that bike so that it's very straight line and straightforward and there's nothing to really get in between you and, and your adventure that you're having. So it seems like Honda's gone the same route with that. I honestly think it's the right move on these bikes that are made to have these, these big grand adventures. And that way you can diagnose and fix stuff on the road, which is, you know, really helpful. Also a little seat update. Seat is still good. So I'm coming up on two hours in the saddle right now and I'm, I'm riding all road. So I've been sitting down the whole time. So if you had this and you were riding off-road a little bit, you'd have no problem. 
honestly, because uh, you'd be standing up some, hypothetically, so <laughs> kind of surprised at that. I expected the seat to be one of the negatives on the bike. All righty, guys, uh, I know y'all been looking at that awesome camera car footage thanks to our awesome sponsors. By the way, you guys supporting our channel sponsors always helps the channel out so much and it allows us to bring you guys that really unique camera car footage. So just really, I appreciate you guys when y'all support them because y'all using our links to support them so it directly supports us so thank you guys so much but y'all been looking at it on the road we're gonna pull off up here and do a little walk around i do think this bike is a very unique looking bike so uh happy to do a little walk around and, and get an idea for it i don't really know what get an idea for it means i'm gonna be 100 percent. sometimes stuff comes out of my mouth and i'm like chase what the hell did that mean that that was one of those times and the answer is i don't know but we're gonna find out together that's all that matters that we're here together one of the things i didn't mention while in the city area guys is the throttle free play again probably something i could change if i were to own the motorcycle but uh as i tell you guys i'm i'm judging these motorcycles as they are stock and that is too much free play i can't really i can't do my fine tuning that i really enjoy you know with the with the clutch and the throttle and stuff like that so not the biggest fan for me Ooh. Alrighty guys, 2024 Honda CRF 300 Rally. So uh, one of the main differentiators with this bike and the regular bike is that headlight. Very unique. To me, it's the quickest way to recognize that you're looking at a rally. And that was the handlebar, our little GPS mount that it has, which is really neat. But there we go guys, Honda Red and everything with the seat. So as far as the suspension goes, the front suspension has 10 inches of travel. The rear has 10 inches of travel and to make things fun, it has 10 inches of ground clearance. So as you guys can see, you know, it hasn't gotten the best review on the road, but all of the re reviews that I've read about this motorcycle have all been off-road. So, you know, it probably doesn't come as a surprise, but this is a bike that's made to go that way, and it's decent in that direction. So take this review with a grain of salt, obviously, if you're looking at it for off-road use. Is this plastic? Yeah, it's plastic. Pretty easy bolts to get to it, though, to turn it into something metal. I would prefer a metal skid guard down there just in case for big rocks or something like that. Or, you know, if you came over something and something hit it, I'd rather it be metal down there. Uh, as you guys can see in that brake rotor, single up front and rear with no ABS at all. So uh, even less tech than the, than the uh, T7 while being pretty big. Also, I love how the exhaust is kind of like tucked in and... The exhaust is not really loud, if you guys have noticed, but for a bike that's going to be off-road, I don't really know if you care so much about the exhaust. You know, like, this thing is going to get the shit beaten out of it off-road, so it's almost okay to leave a stock exhaust on it because, you know, you're, you're not focused on that. You don't want some loud bike out in the woods. But, guys, I'm going to grab my phone off the quad lock if I can get my finger in there. There we go. So I'm going to record some stuff for our peeps over on Instagram and TikTok, my friends. We are at Chase on Two Wheels on TikTok, and we are at C to the Picks on Instagram. If you guys want to go follow us over there and check out the content, I'll be right back. All right, my friends, that's it for our vertical peeps. Now, the question is, is this thing a purchase or a pass? And I will tell you that after we do our steering stem lock test. I do appreciate the red seat. It's way less hot than I expected. All righty, guys. Steering lock. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Look at the beak up there. All right, let's get this thing going. Bro, almost same lane. Top 10% easily. All right, guys. Since everybody's going to say, Chase, you should have done off-road with it. Here, let's go this way. There we go, guys. I'm off-road. I'm doing it off-road. All right, we did off-road with it. You can't say I didn't take it off-road. Obviously, guys, that's a joke. Please don't flame me in the comments, you off-road warriors. Gets up to speed just fine. All righty, guys, the ever-present question of is the 2024 CRF 300 Rally a purchase or a pass now look you guys that have been here for a second you know it's a pass okay it's a pass let me clarify 
before you get mad. It's a pass, dot, 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 for me. I have an explanation. I, after the research I've done, I realize that for the right person, this bike is amazing. I will push you back to uh, Dork in the Road's video. He's got an actual long-term review where he's done a lot of stuff on it. He bought it, spent tons of miles on it. If you want to do anything off-road with this bike, or anything in general, I recommend going and watching his series. Again, link in the description. Don't believe my dumbass. Now, my explanation. So guys, I have limited experience off-road. You know, I've put probably cumulatively less than a thousand miles of off-road riding. Uh, maybe 2,000. But, point is, it's not my, my cup of tea. It's not what I'm really all about. I'm interested in it and I think it's awesome. And some bikes I've done it on, I love it and some I don't. The one thing I've noticed is when I ride lower CC bikes that are very light, I do not get a feeling of stability on those bikes, whether it be on road or off road. And for whatever reason, in my brain right now and, and the, the style of riding I'm doing, I really enjoy the feeling of stability. So whether I'm off-road or on-road, I'm actually preferring the heavier motorcycles because I get that feeling of feeling more planted. I'm an experienced rider, so I'm able to handle the power and the weight. And that is what leads me to kind of shy away from the lower CC bikes right now. They're just not my vibe. Now, this bike being an off-road focused low CC bike, it was destined to not get a good review in this video. I totally acknowledge that, and that is why I am trying to push you guys on all the other amazing reviews that are out there on this bike. Uh, I do not want you guys to watch my video and I be the determining factor for this because I know it's not getting a fair shake. So that is all I'm trying to say. My least favorite things about the bike are the throttle slack and the suspension being so soft. Those are my main drawbacks. I, I don't love the way it looks, but you know, nobody cares. That's just personal preference. But I, I do know that <laughs> this is not gonna be the glowing review that some of you might been have been looking for before you go pull the trigger on the bike so my apologies with that and guys that's really all i've got for this bike i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you're still at this point in the video put oc in your comment down below it stands for outro crew and that just lets me know you made it to the end and let me know what you guys think do you prefer the heavier bikes that feel more stable or do you like the lighter bikes that are feel more nimble you know like I'm, I'm totally down for everybody having their own opinions, and I, I love that. So, anyways, guys, before I'm out of here, I got to give a shout out to my boys over at Mountain Motor Source. This is going to be a bike provided by link in the description. Wouldn't have been able to get on this bike if it wasn't for them. They're a dealership up here in North Georgia with a ton of bikes on the showroom floor. So, if you're in the area, go check them out. And we are headed back there now. Anyways, guys, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. You guys go ride safe, and I'll see you in the next one if I make it through all this traffic.